The UK company Vodafone, uh, in the guise of Safaricom, won a Kenyan government contract in 2007 uh, to set up a mobile payment system in Kenya uh, to facilitate long distance transfer of money across a country with little or no financial, technology or travel infrastructure outside some key population centres. The motivating factor was that many migrant workers were, were making long, arduous and dangerous journeys across Kenya's landmass to take money home to their family and friends, needing to deliver it physically into their hands. M-Pisa means that same money is being transferred by text message on feature phones. Yes, initially the system used all feature phones because of the scarcity of smartphones and the issue of smartphones uh, needing much more regular charging. A very simple system based on sound business principles was put in operation and it allowed many Kenyans to rise out of poverty. Modified versions of m now exist in smartphone format, uh, following greatly increased access to smartphones and solar charging units, and indeed has been rolled out to several other countries. Another nice example is shown here in the street markets of New Delhi in India. You can purchase basic everyday goods with Paytm, Pay through mobile, one of the biggest mobile financial operators in India with over 300 million users. If you go anywhere in India, you can purchase goods uh, with Paytm mobile wallets using QR codes. Even in the temples, you can make donations by cash or by Paytm. Again, very simple technology underpins the process. Street merchants cannot afford card processing facilities, and even if they could, cards credit and debit cards are not common in India. Instead, the merchant displays a QR code, such as the one shown on screen, which contains encrypted details of their account. The customer simply opens their Paytm app, inputs the payment amount, scans the QR code, and the rest is looked uh, after by software and telecommunications. The merchant gets a real-time notification to their phone that they have received the money and can therefore hand over the goods. Here we have Ma Yun, better known as Jack Ma, co-founder of Alibaba, one of the major tech success stories coming out of China. China, as you may well be aware, is set to become the largest economy in the world in the near future. In fact, by some metrics, it, it already is the largest economy in the world. China is something of a fintech enigma. On one hand, they are going to be the first major economy to stop using cash, having been the first to start using it. Within the next two years, China's tier one cities will be cashless, and within a decade after that, the rest of the country will follow. On the other hand, it is only 20 years ago that if you wanted a job as a bank teller in China, you had to pass a proficiency test in using an abacus. In an earlier video, I focused on America's most fintech progressive bank in JP Morgan Chase, and the statistics are impressive. An annual fintech budget of $11 billion, that's half of the annual spend in all of Europe on fintech. They have more software developers than Facebook and Twitter combined. I'm not saying that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it certainly is a thing. But don't be misled, the adoption of technology and finance is being led by countries in Asia and parts of Africa and South America. This image highlights adoption levels from a global survey of 27,000 consumers across many national economies. The figures circled indicate the percentage of participants in a given market who had interacted with at least one fintech product or service. You can clearly see where it's happening. Perhaps ironically, this is good news for you folk and your career prospects because the United Kingdom, in fact the Western world generally, will have to continue to grow and rise to meet the challenge from this new breed of fintech nations. And that will mean investment in skills and jobs. And of course, you may choose to relocate in the future. The good news is that in the world of tomorrow, almost literally tomorrow, fintech skills will travel as easily and as smoothly as medical knowledge. Europe and North America are still by and large running on legacy infrastructure, perhaps through complacency, resting on their laurels, but more likely in financial services terms, 
These are titanic sized ships laden with legacy cargo that simply cannot change direction quickly. When we think of a world superpower, whether in military terms or economic terms, the United States immediately springs to mind. And yet in fintech terms, the US is actually the world's largest user of cash and checks. Americans are still struggling with chip and pin, and yet we have China heading towards being completely cashless in little over a decade. A major step towards that ideal comes in the form of Alipay, launched by Alibaba. Arguably the most successful financial service in the world, it doesn't just allow you to pay for things, you can send, lend, invest, save and borrow. And you can lend and borrow as little as you like for as little time as you like say 24 hours. You don't have to borrow for a year. Borrowing in units over years is another legacy hangover. Traditional banks that were based on paper methods couldn't allow you to borrow for 24 hours because the paperwork involved and the associated administrative costs uh, that, would have made it, that would have been passed on to you, the borrower, would have made it feel too costly for you and at the same time still not profitable enough for them. So lending to the retail customer, you and me in other words, for short-term loans is not in the DNA of traditional incumbent banks. But Alipay has cracked that wide open and is sending it all over Asia. More recently, in fact, partnering with companies closer to home. Here with Barclay Card in 2019 and with TransferWise in March 2020. We can expect to see a lot more of this.